Yo, check it. Epic is a digital agency with a unique blend of technical, strategic, creative skills, and dope text animations on their About section website. Look at that. Things are flying away and things are flying in. So I am gonna show you how to make this. Here's what we got on my page. We're building this in Webflow. We're gonna be using GSAP. And it's actually not as hard as you might think, but there's a couple little tricks with your, with your HTML just to get it right. All right, let's have a look at how to build this. Hey there, Webbay. First things first, I wanna go over a little bit of theory. So we're working with sticky divs here. That's this blue box that you see. That lives within a scroll track. I'll show you in Webflow. This is just like 500 viewport heights or something like that. But so while this is sticky, we're gonna do some animations while that's going on using GSAP scroll trigger plugin. Anyway, so we've got words, 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 imagine, words, 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 build, words, 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 tell. And what we wanna do is we're gonna have imagine, build, and tell in another kind of words div that's absolute that's spanning the same size of that text box. So they're gonna start in their starting positions. Then what we'll do is when the page loads, we'll programmatically set these words right where we want them to be overlapping the words in the other text box. And then we're gonna animate all these words, words, words away, whoosh, they fly off. And then we're gonna animate, imagine like this, boom, it's gonna come down. While that's going on, build is also coming over and then tell is coming up. And then we have to finish off with some punctuation. So comma, comma, period. And we'll cover an edge case where if the user resizes the window, oh, that's not really a resize, then all the words are gonna flow and we'll recreate the timeline that we're making in GSAP. So there's the theory. Let's hop into Webflow and see how to actually build it. All right, I am here in Webflow. Looks just like the Excalibur, right? So we've got our page. This is 100% width and min height of 100 viewport heights. The min height on there doesn't really matter. And then container, this is making sure that everything is centered. You can see we've got a max, max width and auto. And now scroll track. This is the one I was talking about with the 500 viewport heights. If you make this longer, you're, the user's gonna have to scroll more while this animation happens. And then I've just got position relative in here because right under that we have position sticky. This is another div. This has a min height of 100 viewport heights because I want the sticky position to be like the, the full page effect. Uh, so that's why we're doing that. And then we're setting a flex display on there, horizontal, center, center, so that our text wrap, which is inside, ends up being right in the middle of the sticky div. And lastly, you can see at the bottom here, I have it set position to sticky with a top of zero. This just makes sure that the top of the bar sits at the top of the viewport. Okay, within sticky div, we have this wrap called text wrap. And we can see it's also display flex, center, center. This is so that our absolute positioned items, which are these um, imagine, build, tell that I have right here, end up being in the center. I have an, a little bit of a less of a max width on there just so that I could get the text to kind of look similar to it how it did on the live site. And now clicking within text wrap, this is kind of where the stuff gets tricky. So we have our paragraph text. Consider this kind of the normal text that's actually taking up space. And it's just a one-to-one -one copy of the text on epic.net. You can see within this text that we have added some spans. So I have a span that I'm calling bold span and I've used that for the text imagine. And then I have the one down here build and I have the one tell. I've also set its display to inline block rather than normal inline. That's just so that the browser can render transforms on these. Now I'm gonna call this something like static text and you'll see that each individual span I've given an ID of the name of the text dash static. So we have imagine static, build static, and tell static. Now let's have a look at the text that we're gonna animate. That's all in this, what's called slogan final wrap. And slogan final wrap is set to flex center center as well, and then position absolute. This is the key with this one here. And then click this little button for full. This is what we're gonna use to kind of set the text final position. And now inside slogan final wrap, I have these text elements that I wanna match the style to the static asset. So you'll notice it's just paragraph text class with a combo class of bold span, giving it that bold, and then is slogan, which is another combo class to recognize that it is part of the slogan. And I'm calling slogan kind of the final text here, I guess. And now after the word imagine, we have our comma. Comma has all of the same classes, except I've also added this additional is punctuation class, which just adds a margin right of 0.75 rem so that we get a little space between that and the next word. The next word, of course, is build. Same thing as imagine, followed by a comma, and then finally tell, followed by a period. And just look at the classes here so that we know what's going on. So the element with the text imagine, if we go to the settings here, you'll notice I've given it an ID of imagine animated. And then if I skip next to build, I have an ID of build animated. 
and to tell, I have an ID of tell animated. All right, inside of the head tag here, we have four scripts that we're loading up. First, I am loading GSAP. This is the core library. Then I'm loading the scroll trigger plugin right here. I'm also loading the split type library so that we can split our text into spans. And finally, a code sandbox file. And then I have just a style tag here where I target the combo class of is slogan. And I set its visibility to hidden. This avoids flash of unstyled content, which I've covered in other videos. Now, without having written any code yet, we can go ahead and open up Inspector and see what we're getting. So it looks pretty good. We have our tags and we have our bold text here. If I use the Inspector and I cover over, I can see build and build has this ID of build static and we have an ID of imagine static on the imagine text and tell static on our tell text. And if I come up here in the Inspector, we see this is our absolutely position slogan final wrap div and open that and it's getting all the text that we want in here. We just noticed that it's all hidden right now because of that combo class is slogan has visibility set to hidden. All right, my favorite part, which is the code walkthrough. Very first thing we're gonna do is add an event listener for the Windows load event and call this function init. Init is just an empty function right now, but we'll go ahead and start writing our code in here. First thing we're gonna wanna do is call the register plugin function on GSAP object and pass a scroll trigger into that. This gives us access to the scroll trigger plugin. Next, we'll select the elements that we need to provide the custom functionality we're looking to do. So that imagine text, the build text, and the tell text. We're just gonna use the document.query selector method here. That's this right here. And pass in the corresponding IDs that we gave those items in Webflow. Next, we'll splite, I mean split the text into words as spans. We're gonna use that split type library that we imported. And we're gonna pass an ID of words to split, passing an option with type equal to words. Now, I forgot to mention this ID of words to split. So if I come over to Webflow, come down to this paragraph text element that has our static text, click on the gear icon, we'll see I've given it an ID of words to split. Now we need to set the position of imagine, build, and tell text. To do that, we're gonna call this function called match location, and it's gonna get two arguments. It gets imagine static element and the imagine animated element. Match location will set the positions of the elements that we're gonna animate to the same as their static partners. So let's go ahead and define that function, and we know it takes two parameters, the static element and the animated element. And we wanna get the boundaries for the static elements. And we can get this by calling get bounding client rec. This gives us access to stuff like the X position, the Y position, also left and top and width and height, and just a bunch of information about the sizing and the location of that element on the page. We're gonna do the same for what I'm calling the absolute element here or the animated element. Just, just calling get bounded client rec on that as well. Now that we have the data we need, we can use that to calculate the position that we need to set our animated element to. So I'm using gsap.set and passing it an argument of the animated element, and then I'm going to set its x position plus equal to bounds rel dot left minus bounds absolute dot left. And I'm gonna do the same with y plus equals bounds rel dot top minus bounds abs dot top. This is a good chance to come back to our project and see what our code is doing. Notice I'm checking out slogan final wrap here, and that imagine text that's still visibility hidden is where it needs to be though now. It's laid right over imagine, and then build is laid on top of build, and tell is laid on top of tell. We wanna make the text that's gonna animate visible now and the static text hidden. So we can do that pretty easily by just calling gsap.set visibility to visible on all of our animated elements, and we'll call gsap.set visibility to hidden on all of our static elements. Now the imagine text is the imagine animated text rather than the imagine static text. Same thing goes with build and with tell. Continuing on with our code, we're finally gonna start animating stuff. So first, let's create our timeline. I'll say let tl equal gsap.timeline and this gets an options object. We want this to be linked to scroll, so we're gonna use the scroll trigger plugin here, which gets its own options object. Within that, we'll define our trigger. Our trigger is the div with the class of scroll track. Our start is top top, and this can translate to when top of the trigger div is at the top of the viewport. Our end is bottom bottom, and this can translate to when the bottom of the trigger div is at the bottom of the viewport. And we'll set the scrub property equal to one. This links everything to scroll within our timeline. Now we'll go ahead and define the timeline. So I'll call tl.2 split type dot words. Split type is that variable that we've already defined, and this gets all the words within it. And then we've got an options object here. And this I'm gonna call our whooshing words animation. This, we're gonna animate to an opacity of zero, all these nice rotations and percents. So rotation Z 30 degrees, rotation X 40 degrees, Y percent negative 300 and X percent 100. 
and a stagger of 0.05. If I save and come back, refresh, now as I start scrolling, we're getting that text to whoosh away. And notice that it's, path, it's skipping the imagine, build, and tell text because this doesn't belong within that split type dot words. Continuing on with our animation, we want to start sending the animated text to its original position in the x direction, and then we'll follow that up with the y direction. I'll show you how to do that with two gsap.2 statements. First, our first dot two statement, we're going to pass an array with all the animated text elements here. And then within the options object, we want just the it to go to its original x position, so just x zero. We want it to take two seconds, or in this case, I'll call it duration units because it's based on scroll. Um, GSAP will take care of all this stuff for us. Let's save and see what we have so far. I refreshed and I'm scrolling, I'm scrolling, and now we see imagine, build, and tell all start animating to their proper X position, but we also need to animate the Y position. So let's do that with another two statement. I'm gonna call dot two, pass in those same animated elements, and I'll set the Y value to zero now. I'm gonna give it an ease of sign dot in and a duration of one. I'm also gonna set this two statement start time to one second from the end of the previous two statement where we're animating the X values. If I save, start scrolling, now we can see things are coming back exactly where they need to be. Pretty cool. I wanna take a quick second to detour on this code pen by Carl that shows you how you can use combined eases for curved motion. So in this case, we're setting the Y axis ease to something like sine. And if we could ease it even more with the x-axis by something like sine dot in, and you get this really cool curved motion without actually setting any motion path. The final thing we have to finish off with is the punctuation, those commas and the period. And so I'll call dot two again, pass the is punctuation combo class to it, and I'm going to set auto alpha to one so that it starts the opacity starts coming up from zero, and I'm going to stagger each of those by 0.5 duration units. And now we can see we've got basically a completed animation that does exactly what we want it to do. There is one problem though. If I start resizing the screen while the animation is in progress and I come back, we're gonna see that the text is not in the position it needs to be in. If we refresh, it's gonna be okay because it'll call our match location function again. First, I'll add an event listener for the resize event and give it this function of handle resize to run anytime the user resizes the window. I'll define the function handle resize right here. And within that, I'm just gonna call it match location again, like we did up at the top of our code. That will set all the positions that we need. If we save and refresh, we can see now that the text resizes to where it needs to go. The only problem is that we still haven't told our animation that these are the new locations for the text. So if I start doing the animation and then I resize the screen and then I come back, we'll see that the text is still off. Frustrating, but we can fix it. To do this, we wanna make a function that creates our timeline for us because we're gonna to need to call this within our handle resize function. So let's declare that here, create timeline. And all I'm doing is I'm just wrapping all of this code here in those two curly brackets. So this curly bracket, and then down here, this curly bracket. Outside of that function, I'm gonna declare a timeline variable so we can access it outside the scope of this create timeline function. So I'll just say let TL and then give it a semicolon. And then I need to remove this let down here so that I'm just resetting the variable. If you put let, it'll give you an error. Next, if a timeline exists, we wanna save its progress and kill it. So if we've already path, so if we've already defined this TL variable, then we just get the progress of the tween. Otherwise we get zero. And then if that, T, that timeline exists in the variable TL, we call TL.progress. So we're setting the progress to zero here and kill it. Next, at the bottom of the function, so this function is running all over again, we're creating this tween all over again, we wanna set the progress back to the progress that we saved at the start, so this progress right here. So that takes care of turning our timeline into a create timeline function. Now we just need to run this thing on initial load. So right after the function itself, I call create timeline, open close parentheses, and that creates the, the timeline. We also wanna call it within handle resize so that every time we resize the window, we kill the tween where it's at and then remake it now that it already knows about these new locations. And refresh, I can go ahead and resize the window. The text is flowing just nicely. Let's start the animation out. And now that the animation is happening, I'm gonna resize the window again. And things are shifting around a little bit, but if I scroll back up, everything is falling into the correct place. That's really all we gotta do. If I get rid of our inspector window here and refresh, 
I'm just going to hold the down arrow and watch this animation happen. And here comes our punctuation. Awesome. And we're done. Hey, thank you so much for watching. If the video helped, be sure to like it and subscribe. That helps. I love building these fun text effects and these award-winning animations. Show you how to do it behind the scenes so that you could maybe add it to your own website. All right, see you in the next yeah. one.